Hello, beautiful sisters. Welcome back to the Discover Yourself series. We're on day seven, and today is all about dreams to reality. Fall when you break, you got battles to take them, but you figure it out, yeah. When you fall and you break, you got changes to make now. See the light at the end of the tunnel. It's right there, now just look up and follow. Take a step at a time, babe, I'm with you. All the way. So baby, get up, 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 up. I am super excited about this topic. This topic is really the whole reason why I put this series together. So if you are new here, welcome. My name is Heather Baxter. I'm CEO of HB Women's Ministry, an international women's ministry where we come together to believe, behold, and become all God's created us to be in whatever season of life. I decided, it was just on my heart, it was a desire, keyword for today, to put together a 30-day series with topics that is going to help us discover things about ourselves so that we can line up to best meet God's desires and directions for our life. Every single day is planned out for you to help better understand yourself according to the way that God created you. Through exploring, you gain self-knowledge. Through self-knowledge, you will discover a desire that God is going to place in front of you. And that desire is going to cause something in your mind to light up or maybe reshape a thought or redirect a part of your life wheel. Now you're probably thinking if you're here for the first time, what is a life wheel? Life wheel is a huge part of my quarterly review and I take it with me every single day when I work in my planners and my journals, writing out my goals and everything else. What happens is every single day we face challenges on this side of heaven. Maybe it's an emotional challenge, physical challenge. That challenge can actually create a beautiful tapestry in your life because God works through all things. So in today's message, I want to talk to you specifically about dreams to reality. And I want to explain to you why this is so important to understand. First of all, I'm really excited that our Dream Blueprint journals will be coming out for 2025 very soon. Those blueprint journals are basically your journals to dream and explore, your place to just look over your entire life wheel. Mine's a bit of a mess because I always go back to it every single quarter. I'm playing with it. I'm rating what needs to change, what's going well, what goals working, what habits working, because God wants to see transformation. We already talked about transformation in our Discover Yourself series so far. If we do not have a vision, then we are not seeing change because a vision demands change. A vision and a desire from God is going to realign things in your life. And I love that. I mean, God wants to stop, talk to your career. He may want to realign some things there. Sometimes he'll use your emotions. If something does not feel right, then we need to do a few things, which I'm going to talk to you about those few things so that you can realign and reset yourself according to God's desire for your career. Maybe there's something off that you sense in your marriage or in a relationship. Maybe something in parenting, your physical health, your mental health. I'm going to show you how to shift and understand that God wants to speak to you over your dreams and your desires. And when he begins to get involved in your story and speak over your dreams and desires, you are going to begin to see a shift. So let's jump into today, Psalms 37, four through five. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the, your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him and he will help you. There's some key words here. It's great to put up that vision board, right? It's great to just jot down your visions in here and journal at the beginning of the year and set all your resolutions. But what I'm trying to do 
is grab you now in this quiet time. Right now, it's the season of winter. We're kind of going into fall, winter, and then January is going to be set the goals. If I can help you understand and discover yourself now, you are going to be so far ahead when you go to set up the desires that God has already spoken to you about. See, he can start now. And therefore, you are that much further ahead when it comes to January because you're going to already hear and sense things God is speaking to you about, even possibly your word for the year, your word for 2025. I know God's kind of, I'm hearing some sort of whisper now and I keep jotting it down and God will continue to confirm that in all areas of my life. So I'm going to show you how this works if you just step in a little bit with me. First of all, a few keywords that I circled, desires commit and trust desires commit and trust i want to break those down a little bit and i want you to see how god wants to step in and do something exceedingly abundantly and above all that you can ask think or imagine which by the way is your cross reference verse if you go down below it is god wanting to do something so big in your life but what are the steps that you need to take to get to that place to say, wait a minute, God came in and realigned my vision board. He's all about vision boards. He's all about you writing it down. However, we cannot put our agenda on paper and then expect him to be the genie in the bottle. It doesn't work that way. A lot of times you may be in the wrong career. You may be with the wrong person. You may be parenting the wrong way. You may be taking care of your health the wrong way, or there's things that God wants to eliminate out of your daily habits that is going to help in the area of your mental health and physical health. So how do we know how to realign? What does that mean? So the first thing I want you to do is let's read the little middle part of our devotion today that I put in there, and then we're going to go and talk about the word desire. It says, this verse solidifies joy and fulfillment in our relationship with God, making him our priority and source of delight. When we align our desires, if you have a pen, a highlighter, highlight that. Align our desires with his will, circle the word will, and place our trust in him. He responds. He responds by guiding our paths and bringing his purpose to fruitation in our life. It's a reminder that true fulfillment comes from seeking God first and letting him shape our dreams and actions. Well, this 30 days is you seeking and self-discovering truths in God's word that will help you create a dream vision board and help you jump into the desires God has for you so you can see that wheel move in the momentum of God's power. Amen. God moving in it. So what we want to do first is how do we receive desires? I think that's a question. That was something I wanted to know. Like, okay, this word desires. God says that he's going to give you the desires of your heart. What does desires mean? Well, anywhere that you see heart in scripture, if you're part of any of the teaching here at HB Ministries, heart means your mind, will, and emotions. Draw a heart somewhere the letter M, mind, the letter W, will, the letter E, emotions. Really important whenever you see the word heart to understand mind, will, and emotions. So let me read this again. The Lord will give you your heart's desires. The Lord will give you the desires in your mind and in your emotions and through the will of God. So let's take this one step further. What do we need to do to receive desires? Number one, surrender your heart to God. There's two different vision boards out there in the world today, a vision board that is surrendered to God and a vision board that is surrendered to self. You will see that all over YouTube, two vision boards. Now, I'm not saying that the vision board surrendering self is, they're not going to work. Yes, they'll work. Of course, you can find a way to make something happen. But a lot of times when we make something happen and move something out of whack in another part of our life wheel, because that wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't supposed to shift. And so it puts all of this off balance. So God's will is going to keep everything flowing in momentum. I always call it Holy Spirit peace, blessings, the favor of God. So another thing to do is ask God. Ask God for your desires. So if you've surrendered your heart and just said, Lord, I'm giving you my heart. Please start speaking to me. Show me parts of my life. So after you surrender, you're asking. 
Maybe you're like, I don't have a dream. I don't have desires. Ask. Right after you ask, I want you to just simply trust. Put your hands up and say, God, I asked. I'm trusting now. When you're asking and when you're trusting, have your notebook ready. This is where you're going to begin with me in 2025. If you've never done this notebook, join me in 2025 because the beginning of January, that first week of January, all the way through to the end, I'm going to show you how to put this in order. So everything that you're doing right now on your arc, you're kind of put away in private, working, doing some self-discovery. All of this is going to matter when you really sit down and start putting your book together. You are going to be 60 days ahead because we started on this. You're going to understand the word desire. So when I ask you to shape your book and there's areas that you're confused on, remember, you're just going to ask God, surrender and trust. That page may be empty for a little bit. But right now, I'm nudging you to start asking God about those areas of your life wheel. Start asking God about these areas in your life wheel. So when you get ready in January, you will know a little bit of what God wants you to write down. You'll have that feeling. So just sit and wait and be patient. But God will bring the desire. Where is he going to bring the desire? To your heart. You're going to feel it in your thoughts and in your emotions. You're going to hear it in your mind. You're going to hear a word. Let me give you an example. At the beginning of last year, because in the beginning of our journals, there is an area for you to put your word for the year. I love that. You can write your word down for the year. Well, how do you know your word for the year? Well, I usually ask God, what is your desire? What do you see going on? Now, sometimes he gives me a different word every single quarter. He may change the word up. It has something to do with the main word for the year, but it might be something specific for that month. And I love, love this rhythm and routine that I have because it's that word that's constantly in front of me as I set my daily goals. And I have reminders to myself, if I wanna see this, and this is the big yearly uh, vision, then it starts quarterly, monthly, and weekly, and daily. And we're gonna talk all about that when we get into our journals in 2025. But one thing that I always ask at the beginning of the year is what, what is my word for the year? My word last year was alignment. Well, this whole year, it's coming to the end. Alignment. God looks at every little thing that's shifting you away from really accepting that real desire, really seeing God's whole plan. It can be little things, little things in your habits daily. It can be your time management. It can be things in physical. It can be things that you're doing, places that you're going, people that you're hanging out with. There's all kinds of things God's been shifting and changing my entire life of faith. And if you want to go to the next big desire, if you're dreaming that big, there is some stuff that needs to happen. And there went on my journaling because God began to speak to my heart and he was showing me things. And I love that journey because along that journey, it doesn't mean things are going to change instantly, but you are changing. It's a journey of self-discovery. So I want you to first just get in here and start thinking about the word desire. Start praying about it. Start surrendering your heart. Start looking for it. Start trusting. Start sitting and waiting, getting ready, preparing. That's part of self-discovery right there. Now, what else will happen when God speaks to your desires? He's going to highly influence your thoughts. You're going to maybe hear a repetitive thought. Like for me, I was constantly hearing a repetitive thought in the word alignment, but in a certain area of my life will. So let me give you an example. This isn't my example, but this is, I had so many coaching calls this year and it had to do with marriages. And I would ask the ladies to step back after we would have our call and we would be meeting back after a week later. And I would ask them to begin to start praying for God to influence a thought or a word. And for some people it was alignment or return or faithfulness or forgive. And then we would take that one word and start to understand what God's will was. You see when it says here, God will give you the desires of your heart, but it says commit everything you do to the Lord. What is the heart? Mind, will, and emotion. A lot of times our will is not lining up with God's will. And so he'll begin to speak a word. He'll begin to influence your thoughts. He'll begin to bring people in your life. When you do Bible study, 
which we do here in our regular plan in the ministry, that Bible study is there for the Word of God to begin to influence your thought and therefore shift things in your life wheel. It's so awesome to watch. And so as your thoughts are being influenced, by the Holy Spirit, by God, you're lining up more with the will of God and that is shaping you for your preferred destiny, for the reality of the real vision God has for you. And his visions and dreams for you are exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. They're outside of what you probably already placed on that dream board, but God is shaping you. So where do we start? It starts with the desire. It starts with the desire. And then there's a whole little plan that is so beautiful for you to write and release and realign and reset. And that is all in our journals for the year. As a matter of fact, I'll close here. I got up this morning and there was a part of my wheel, lots of writing, lots of writing happens in my journal, but there was part of the wheel that was really bothering me. As a matter of fact, it was in a conversation with my husband last night. And I lost sleep over it. Have you ever lost sleep over a part of your life will? Whether it's your marriage, a child, I was losing sleep. And it was 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up, I grabbed my bag of pens, and I grabbed this notebook. I went down into my kitchen, turned on our fireplace, and I began to weep. And I just started writing. See, in parts of your dream journal for each quarter, I have the last quarter. Every single area of your life wheel, I have an area where it will will give the topic. And then you have a page and some things to discuss. Well, there were some things I knew that I needed to discuss. And sometimes the influences on your thoughts are not positive. They feel kind of yucky. But God sometimes puts those there to show you where you are out of alignment. And a lot of times when we're out of alignment, we want to give up. We feel like, I'm no good at this. We start to, you know, self-sabotage ourselves, our goals, our dreams, our giftings. And we have all this negative labels, negative self-talk, which we're going to talk about that here in our uh, Discover Yourself series. We're going to talk about negative labels. But I was going in that route. And I was so tearful because I was tired. I'm frustrated about something. And what is going on why why is it not why is it not and then you do the comparing thing all of that this book always brings me back to center because i began to affirm and write affirmations under that area i began to claim and then i began to write down the desires what i want to see and then i said god where am i out where am i out of whack will you show me I'm surrendering. When you surrender, that means sit back, wait, and listen. Sometimes that means time out, stop for a while, take a break. Quiet your mouth and quiet your thought. Reset. Let God in. Sometimes we're moving in a direction and moving, and God, it's great stuff, but God's not in it. A hundred percent. That's not the best. So it starts with desires. He will give you the desire. He will give you the steps every step of the way. And you begin to connect all the steps. Another illustration is dot to dot. Who didn't love doing a dot to dot when they were little? Dot to dot to dot to dot. Desire one, thought one, will connect to the next dot, the next dot, the next dot, the next dot. This can take a year of a process, three years, 15 years. So when I was sitting in that area of my life wheel early this morning, I was going back to the very first dot. And that was over 20 years ago when God spoke about something and I was just learning about transformation. My life was just changing. And God was showing me a passion and a purpose that I had in me. I had to go back to that first dot. Sometimes you got to go way back to a dot where you last heard God and reset right there and realign. Sometimes in marriages, we get a few dots away from the center of God's will. We make mistakes. We fall into sin. We can go back to where we know starting point is with God and we can ask him to erase where we connected and reconnect to the next great desire he has for us. It's a beautiful thing, sister. It's a beautiful thing. So I pray today's devotional was informative, exciting, Get you to really think, grab your space, your pen, and just sit down and talk to God. 
Ask them to reorganize all of those desires and help you make a shift in your mind, will, and your emotions so that as you dream and set your dream board up in 2025, you're already ahead because you're exploring what God would have for you. All right, beautiful sisters, thanks for hanging out. I will see you tomorrow in day eight. Bye-bye. Before the dawn, it's always dark Before the light